Hi. Um, I came to your material through a book called, uh, which was a New York Times bestseller, I think, called uh, Wake Up Your Life Is Waiting To You, written by a woman who, I don't know, I'm guessing, but maybe suffered some kind of mental illness, wrote two very dark books following that and and descended into whatever and, and, and passed away recently. I guess that disturbed me when I found that out because I was quite invigorated by the material in the first book. She um, was a student of Abraham. She had been on the weekly yeah. tape program for some time. Right. And her first book was a literal translation of things that she had heard at workshops. Okay. Right. And her subsequent book was a literal translation of something that she heard at some other workshop. Right. Yeah, it was pretty dark and bizarre. Um, and contradictory to the original work, which didn't quite because make sense. Because it was not coming through her. <laughs> yeah. It was just replicated by her. Yeah, yes. sure. But I wonder, um, you know, I've been a student of, of this material, well, different materials, and particularly Wayne Dyer's material, since I had suffered a serious illness about 10 years ago. I guess the hope is that, that we would all be able to overcome illness. I know Wayne has also you know, had some illness and heart problems and things like that. I often look at, the, at, at people in the personal development movement and think, gosh, <laughs> if, if these guys are still suffering... Uh, you know, illnesses, what hope is there for a mere mortal like me? If I don't Esther, know if anyone else in the room has felt Esther that way. If can't but... get her lunch delivered... Right. <laughs> <laughs> what is it that you do want? I want us all to be able to heal ourselves. <laughs> That's what I'd like to hope, that, that someone out there can do that or people can do that. And I've not yet come across a teacher that's actually, I felt, has demonstrated that. Uh, in the well, physical form. Here's the thing that we really want you to hear, and we think you'll mm-hmm. enjoy this as this unfolds. So imagine someone who has some sickness when they're little and doesn't like it and wants wellness and who reaches for good feeling thoughts and lives happily ever after. So the desire that was born out of their childhood illnesses and their subsequent alignment with well-being holds them in a place where they ask and it is given, they ask and it is given, they ask and it is given. So they are on an ongoing basis continuing to create wellness. So there are a lot of people that are creating wellness, but you say, well, that's not so interesting because they've sort of always been well. And we say, well, what they did was they didn't let the gap get too big between what they wanted and what they were living. So they just kept maintaining wellness. And there are lots of people that demonstrate that. And the beasts of your planet really demonstrate that. So then you say, Well, I want to meet someone who has a very strong, severe, fatal illness. And I want to see them heal themselves. And we say, well, there are examples of those also. But it's much harder for them because you have to remember that, first of all, they had a vibration going for a long time that they didn't know they had going. They had desires that they were in opposition for. That's why the illness happened within their physical apparatus to begin with. So would you not agree that it is more difficult for someone to have moved all the way here to not feeling good on the emotional scale to then make their way back up the emotional scale than someone who just steadily was moving up the emotional scale? And we want you to just a little while say to yourself, there are all kinds of people who create wellness, but it's a lot easier to create wellness from a place of feeling pretty good than it is to create wellness from a place of fatal illness. Oh, because, yeah. So when the doctor says to you, what you've got is incurable, in other words, when, <laughs> when you are told that what you have, there is no way out of it, you have to be a very strong being even to project your thought away from this pronouncement that's been given to you by someone that you presumably respect and believe. When somebody tells you that you can't get there from there and you believe them, you can't get there from there, you see. Do you know? And we know, and so we'll tell you and maybe you'll know. We'd like you to know because it feels so good to know this. There are people who develop illnesses every day that because it isn't diagnosed get over whatever it is that's been bumming them out, get refocused and come back into alignment. But you don't want to talk about those healings. You only want to talk about the ones where they were dying and everyone (laughs) agreed they were dying and then somehow they miraculously moved themselves back up the emotional scale. And we say, if we were standing in your physical shoes, we'd be moving up the emotional scale long before we were pronounced terminally ill. So... 
What we notice as we look into the medical profession today, we see doctors and scientists literally scaring people to death with their pronouncements of diseases that are incurable. When we know that there is not any disease that is incurable, you can get to where you want to be from wherever you are if you will point in the direction that you want to go and continue to move in that direction. But it is a rare one that does that. A person will begin moving in that direction and then take another test and then move in that direction and then read in the paper that somebody that they know that had the same thing died and then move in that direction and then be disheartened by someone who was a great guru who died of something. In other yeah. words, yeah. you find so many reasons to not continue to move in the direction of what you're wanting. Anyone can get from wherever they are to wherever they want to be if they will pay attention to their own guidance and constantly reach for the thought that gives them the feeling of relief and lets them know that they are moving in that direction. We don't want it to be a big deal. We want you to start forking while you're well. We want you to get a handle on your vibration while you're feeling good. We want you to understand that it's only about vibrational proximity to who you are and that's all it's ever been. And the doctors are never going to find enough cures because they cannot with their cure, which is addressing the result of your vibration, do anything about your vibration. You're the only one who can do something about your vibration, you see. We'd like to zap you all with worthiness. And if we could, you'd stop being sick. We'd like to zap you all with purpose and an understanding that you are valuable beings and that you are creators of your own experience. And you've come here to ride the fabulous ride and wave of this time space reality. There's not a reason in the world for any of you to be sick, but we watch the little ones come forth feeling so good about who they are and almost every day of interacting with those who have forgotten how valuable they are these little ones are little by little taught their own diminished value you see and when you've come to really know your value and you're born into an environment that seems to foster your lack of attention to your value that's what causes you to be sick if you've got two vibrations going on, what I want and what I believe, law of attraction is amplifying both of them. So the stakes are getting higher and higher and higher. And so eventually, if you don't do something about closing the gap and becoming one with who you really are, what's going to happen is your symptoms of discord are going to become more evident. So first there is emotion, then there is sensation, then there is the sensation that you would call pain, then there is the manifestation that you would call the lump growing or the car running over you or whatever. In other words, the manifestations keep coming to indicate to you where your vibration is. So back to the emotional scale someone who really 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 wants something it's important to them like life itself and they do not believe that there's any possible way of achieving it so their emotion is one of incredible despair what diseases are a vibrational match to that and so what we want you to realize is we don't want you to treat the disease oh treat it if you need to but we want you to treat the vibrational discord and it isn't until you get to the vibrational discord that anyone will have a healing experience. Another thing that we remark upon often is that sometimes people who are powerful teachers want so much to impress upon the masses their value and for good reason they want the masses to benefit by their experience. So they'll create an illness so that they can climb out of the hole of illness so that they can write a book about their recovery because when you think about it every audience loves someone's story of recovery and almost no one wants to hear about some prissy little thing that's always been living happily ever after yeah. in other words you really like adversity and then triumph and and you're not all that excited and don't buy very many books about triumph without adversity you see and that thing stuck in your craw causes a lot of people to create a lot of adversity for, for themselves and then they get caught in the vibration of adversity and are not able to bring themselves out of it in time but not to worry when they croak they go right back into pure positive energy well that was the most Thank complete answer much. we've ever given to the most complete question about same that we've ever heard yes 
Thank you. Do you feel you. satisfied? Oh, yes. Thank you. Thank you for the work you do.